And now, verse 11, this is very interesting to see here something. This is the first time that God looks at a man and says, you are cursed. You know, he never said that to Adam. We saw that when we studied Genesis 3. He only cursed the ground. You read Genesis 3 carefully. He never cursed Adam. But for the first time, now he looks at a human being and he says, you are cursed because of the wrong attitude that you had towards your brother and because you killed him. What does it say in 1 John 3? Let's turn back to that. This is the message, verse 11, which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was the evil one. To whom is that exhortation given? Is it an exhortation given to unbelievers? You unbelievers, don't be like Cain. Is John writing to unbelievers? No. My little children, you born again children of God, you can become like Cain if you are not careful. That's the meaning of this exhortation. And if I don't see seriously that all that we are speaking about Cain is not referring to some ungodly Jew or some unbeliever, but to me, if I don't see that in the volume of the book, it's a warning for me, then I'm in great danger. If I don't see that I have the same flesh that Cain had. Is there anybody here who's got a different flesh from what Cain had? That's why the warning comes, not like Cain. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be like Cain. That's John's exhortation. Who was of the evil one? And slew his brother. Why? Because he didn't have victory over sin. And his brother had victory over sin. That's basically the reason. That's what it says there. The person who doesn't have victory over sin. Is upset with the brother who has victory over sin. And we see that even today. Religious people who don't believe in victory over sin. Are upset with their brothers. Who are righteous. Who believe in victory over sin. Who are they following such religious people? Okay. Do not marvel, my brethren, verse 13, when these so-called worldly, so-called Christians, worldly people hate you. But we know we have passed out of death into life because we hate nobody. We love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in the same death that Cain was living in. And God spoke to Cain and said, you are cursed. From the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And when you cultivate the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. Yeah, and what does Cain say to all that? He said, Lord, to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. He doesn't say my sin is too great. He's not bothered about that. My punishment is too great. He still doesn't have any consciousness of the greatness of his sin. Even after all this, only my punishment. And that is the language of people who go to hell. Burning in hell like the rich man who went to hell. The words they say is, my punishment is too great to bear. It is too great to bear in hell. But do they think of their sin? No. What does that teach us? That when I am more afraid of the punishment of sin than of sin itself, I'm not really holy. I'm just like Cain. Cain was also afraid of the punishment. Oh, if I do this, God may punish me. That's bad. Punishment is bad. I don't want it. But the sin itself, I'd like to do it. If only I could avoid the punishment. <clears throat> There's no holiness there, my brothers and sisters. The language which says, my punishment is too great to bear. 
is not the language of a godly person. It's the language of an ungodly child of the devil. And he says, Lord, you have driven me. He doesn't even call him Lord. Thou hast driven me this day from the face of the ground. And from thy face I shall be hidden. I shall be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. And it will come about that whoever finds me will kill me. So what is the Lord's punishment for him? There will be no fruitfulness in your life. Verse 12. When you cultivate the ground, nothing will come. There will be no stability in your life. You will be a wanderer. And that is the spiritual condition of all those who have a loose attitude towards sin. We can apply that spiritually. When a person's attitude towards his brother is not right, when a person's attitude towards sin is not right, there's no fruitfulness in his life, he works, he comes to the meetings, he does this, he does that, the ground yields nothing. Ten years of cultivation yield nothing. And he's a wanderer, there's no stability in his life. Because the man doesn't take sin seriously. Just comes to the meetings. I'm sure Cain would have come to the meetings if he were living in Bangalore. He may have even come to CFC. Sure. Why not? I think the religious type, he may have come here and sat here. But there'd be no stability in his life. No spiritual stability. No spiritual fruitfulness. The ground yields nothing. Wanderers. Wandering around. Drifting. No growth. No stability. No fruitfulness. Only afraid of punishment. I don't want punishment. My punishment is too great to bear. God's face hidden, verse 14. That from thy face I shall be hidden. It says in verse 16, he went out from the presence of the Lord. And that is what hell is. Hell means to be forsaken by God, out of God's presence. That's what Jesus suffered for three hours on the cross. Hell. And Cain began to experience it right there. When he says, it will come about that whoever finds me will kill me. There are so many. There are 40, 50,000 people on the earth already. Any of them may kill me now. So the Lord said to him, see God's mercy. Even to a man like Cain, who has rejected him, we see something of the fantastic mercy of God. Therefore, if anybody kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. Mercy. In God's judgment, there is mercy. And the Lord appointed a sign, set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. And I want you to see here, brothers and sisters, I said that Cain and Abel were a picture of these two religions. One, the true religion that Jesus brought, and the other, the false religion, which is a perversion of the truth. We can say the origin of Jerusalem and Babylon is here in Genesis 4. Babylon is a religious system and Cain was a religious man. And the Jewish religion in the time of Jesus was thoroughly Babylonian spiritually. It was like Cain. That's why as I said they were jealous of Jesus and like Cain killed Abel. They killed Jesus. And what was the result? Like God cursed Cain, God cursed the Jews. That's the symbolic meaning of Jesus cursing the fig tree. He cursed the Jews. And what happened? For 2,000 years, like we read in verse 12, the Jews have been wanderers on the face of the earth, never able to live in any country for 2,000 years. And whoever saw the Jew wanted to kill him. It's, it's not so much in the 20th century, except with Hitler, who killed six million of them. But it has really been true in history that the Jew has been hounded to death, just like Cain. But the Lord has put a mark on the Jew, like he put a mark on Cain. There was mercy. So that where people have killed the Jews, vengeance has been taken on them sevenfold. On Hitler, on Haman, and all the others. And that's just in passing to see how all this is pictured there in Cain and Abel. 
in the religion of the Jews and the religion of Jesus. Now today it's not the Jews. Today it's harlot Christianity that followed on in the stream of Cain and those Pharisees of Jesus' time and it has become what we call today Babylon. And that true faith that began with righteous Abel, two streams that began way back there with Adam's children. And that's come on right down till the end of time. Now, so don't think there's not much of a difference between Babylon and Jerusalem. That's like saying there's really not much of a difference between Cain's religion and Abel's religion. There's a world of difference. One is born in the pit of hell and the other is born in heaven. And we know that there's a warning to those who live in Jerusalem in the epistle of John. Don't be like Cain. Be careful that you never allow even a small seed of such an attitude towards another brother. Even in seed form. You may never kill. None of us will ever kill. But the seed. God sees the anger. He says, why are you angry? You aren't a murderer yet. But why are you upset? Why are you upset with that brother? Why have you got all those thoughts in your heart against that brother right now? Why have you got all those thoughts in your heart against that sister right now? If you can hear God there and judge yourself there at that point, we can save ourselves from Babylon. Otherwise, we can sit here and be a part of that religious system that Cain started. May God save us.